Hey guys, this is Dan from Ledger Support. How are you doing? So, um, you want to stake ETH from your Ledger device and earn yield? Sure, it's possible, and there are actually many ways to do this in Ledger Life. So, that's what we're going to talk about in this video today. So, first of all, it's important to take a step back and look at what it means to stake ETH. And before we start, I think it's important to clarify the terminology a little bit. So, I'll be referring to the Ethereum network as Ethereum and to Ether, the native coin of the Ethereum network, as ETH. So Ethereum is the network and ETH is the coin. Now, the Ethereum network is a proof of work chain. So ETH is not staked on the Ethereum chain you're familiar with because, well, that chain doesn't support staking yet. Instead, when you stake ETH, your ETH is actually deposited onto a different Ethereum chain called the Beacon chain. And um, often, your ETH is actually pooled with other coins provided by other Ethereum users. Um, this is called liquid staking. So you can think of the Beacon Chain as sort of a parallel Ethereum chain that runs on proof of stake instead of proof of work. Both exist at the same time, right? Um, in the future, the Ethereum chain um, that we know uh, right now the, the legacy Ethereum chain will absorb the beacon chain. Uh, proof of work will be turned off and the beacon chain will provide consensus via proof of stake. This event is called the merge and it's one of the most anticipated events in the history of Ethereum. So you have two blockchains that just become one. We turn off proof of work, proof of stake comes to life and now you've got Ethereum with proof of stake, that's that's the merge basically. Now, the reason why uh, ETH often needs to be pulled to be staked on the beacon chain is that because the beacon chain requires a minimum of 32 ETH to stake, which is quite expensive for most people, right? Um, besides, staking in the beacon chain is also a one-way route, which means that once your ETH is deposited, you won't be able to withdraw until a few upgrades after the merge takes place. Now, optimistically, the merge will take place in about six months, but it could take more, and um, the upgrade to withdraw your coins could take place six months after that, but it could also be uh, over a year so or more, who knows, right? So it's important to understand what happens to ETH once it gets deposited into the beacon chain. So at this point, you might be thinking, okay, well, I don't, I don't really want to stake my ETH anymore because I don't have 32 ETH and I don't want my ETH to be locked. So what if I need my ETH back tomorrow, let's say? Uh, so fortunately, Ledger has partnered with a service that solves that problem, and this service is called Lido. Um, you can think of Lido as a service that helps you stake ETH onto the beacon chain. Uh, now, Lido is available in Ledger Live. I'll show you right now on the screen where you can find it. You go into the Discovery tab, and then you click Lido, and then the app will load. Now. Um, as I was saying, you can think of Lido as a service that helps you stake ETH onto the beacon chain. Um, with Lido, you can uh, stake any amount of ETH and you receive STETH in return. So what it would look like on the app is that you select, uh, you make sure that um, the Ethereum chain is selected and then you select the amount of ETH that you want to feed into the app that you want to stake and then you will get the, the equivalent amount in STETH, which you can see here, okay? So you give ETH and you get STETH in return. Okay, what about STETH exactly? So STETH is just a normal ERC20 token that represents staked ETH on the beacon chain. So I'm going to repeat this. STETH is just a normal ERC20 token that represents staked ETH on the beacon chain. So the value of one ETH should be equal to the value of one STETH. There is a peg. There is a one-to-one -one relationship between ETH and STETH, one-to-one. Well, the cool thing about it, though, uh, is that um, compared to ETH, which does nothing by itself, well, STETH, because it represents staked ETH, STETH accrues daily rewards via a, what we call a rebase mechanism. Uh, in practical term, this means that your STETH balance in your Ledger Ethereum account will grow uh, every single day. You don't have to do anything. 
Um, just so you know, in case you have STETH in your account, STETH will appear as just a token into uh, your Ethereum account. So you'll go into your Ethereum account like this, and then STETH will appear in the token section here, just like a, a normal token. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, so ST and, and that balance of STs will uh, accrue daily. So day one, it will be like, for example, one STEs, day two will be 1.00001 STEs, and so on and so forth. So it, it gets bigger every single day. Uh, what, what doesn't happen is you won't get new STEs transactions to um, your Ledger Ethereum accounts. So for example, if you're familiar with other staking uh, methods like like Polkadot, for example, where you get daily transactions. In this case, with STs, is not the case, right? Uh, it's just the STs balance that goes up every single day. That's what we call um, this the the rebase mechanism. That's what it's all about. So holding STs is basically akin to staking ETH onto the Beacon Chain, except for the fact that STs is completely liquid. Uh, which means that you can easily transfer STs to different wallets. You can swap it back for any other tokens. Uh, you can move it to a different wallet. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and you can also swap it for ETH, which is great because that means that now, um, unlike staking on the beacon chain where the ETH gets locked, if you have STs, you can also get back into normal ETH at any time. So I know that's a lot of information to take. So let's bring it back um, for a bit. Um, so holding STs is similar to staking ETH, but you can hold any amount of STs you're comfortable with. So you don't need 32 ETH like solo staking on the Beacon Chain. And on top of this, you can swap back from STs to regular ETH at any time of your choosing. So that's a great deal, right? Um, basically, STs in Lido solve the two main issues with staking on the Beacon Chain, which is uh, tokens get locked and... Um, the second one, so tokens get locked and you need 30 to ETH. With STs and Lido, you don't need that, okay? It solves both problems, so it's great. Um, now, before I show you how to get STs, let me go over the potential risks of having STs, right? Because there are some. STs only has value as long as it's backed by real ETH stake on the Beacon Chain. The staking service is operated by Lido, so if Lido ever goes down or incur what we call slashing, then there is a risk that STs will depeg and lose its value against ETH. So that's a scenario where ETH and STs are not one-to-one -one anymore. Maybe STs is half the price of ETH. So that's that's a risk, but Lido has been in business for quite a long time now, and there has never been an event, uh, but there could be an event, uh, there could be the R risk, of course, like anything in life. Uh, but if that's a risk you're comfortable taking, then let's move on to how you can acquire STEs. So first, the first um, the first obvious way to get STEs is to use the Lido app in Ledger Live. And I'm going to pop the Lido back, uh, the Lido app back up. So you use the Lido app in Ledger Live. You feed the app some ETH and it'll stake your ETH and send an equivalent amount of STs token to your Ledger account. And that's what I showed um, last time. Uh, see, like I feed my ETH and then I get STs in return. And you can see here the APR is 4%, which is quite nice. Um, and that's the APR I will get on my STs bound. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, that's one way you can do it, but there is another way you can do it. Um, and that second way is also very convenient if you want to move from STEs back to regular ETH. So let me show you. So we're going to use Paraswap uh, to swap ETH for STEs, okay? But you can also do it the other way. You can swap STEs for ETH, which is very convenient. So, you, so let, let's use Paraswap first. I'm going to show you where Paraswap is and uh, Ledger Live. So here's Paraswap. Um, it's loading. So you can think of Paraswap as Skyscanner or Expedia for Ethereum uh, decentralized exchanges. So basically you tell Paraswap that you want to swap a token for another token and you will find the best execution for your trade, the cheapest route. Uh, it's it's a great tool. So using Paraswap, I can, um, I can swap almost any amount of ETH for STEs, as long as I have enough ETH for transaction fees, which might be a problem in my case because I don't have a lot of ETH um, into my 
account. But let's let's see. <laughs> Once your ETH has been swapped for ST ETH and is that has landed into my Ethereum account, it will start automatically uh, accruing the, uh, daily rewards. Uh, the, the rewards will uh, come every single day. Now, just a quick note about Paraswap. If you're swapping large amount of ETH, it's best to control for something called slippage. Uh, so you get the best execution for your trade. Um, you can use slippage to specify what's the, the maximum slippage you're comfortable with. Um, I'll show you in a second what that looks like. So let's go into Paraswap. So first I'm going to select, uh, I wanna make sure I'm on the Ethereum network here, okay? And then I wanna go from ETH. Here, uh, make sure all the token lists are uh, turned on, okay? Um, so I wanna go from ETH to STETH. And this is where you wanna make sure that you've got, um, that you've got all the, the token list activated, right? Otherwise, you might not see STETH. Also, make sure you've got the latest version of Ledger Live, right? Um, otherwise, you might get bugs in the app. So not, not fatal bugs, but some UI bugs. So make sure uh, Ledger Live is up to date. Make sure that your Ledger device is running the latest firmware and has uh, the Ethereum app installed. And also, you will need the Paraswap app, which you can probably see on my screen here. It's a special app that you can download from the manager. And that's the app that will allow you to swap any token, um, but any Ethereum token uh, and ETH uh, directly from your ledger device uh, with clear signing. Anyway, um, so in my case, I want to swap, let's say, uh, all my ETH for STETH. So I'm going to do this. Um, okay, I'm going to say swap. Um, here's the slippage, so I want to, I'm comfortable with 1% slippage. Uh, because it's a small transaction, but if you're swapping a large amount of crypto, you might want to decrease slippage. Otherwise, you might, you might, um, slippage is bad for your trade. The more slippage, the, the more it will break the order book. Anyway, um, and then I'm going to select, uh, yep, yeah, so that looks good. Transaction fee looks okay. I'm going to confirm the order. Let's see if I can get a transaction. Network fees, okay. I'm okay with that. So I'm going to get a prompt on my ledger device. Okay. Need to allow the manager. So I'm doing this from a ledger nano S plus device. So I've never done it from, from, from this one. I'm not sure it's going to necessarily work. If not, I'll just try it with a different device. Yeah, I think it's not working with this device yet. So I'm going to do it with my NOS. Oh, no, never mind. It worked. Um, so I review the transaction. So swap. I receive STE. Okay, so I'm going to accept and send. And then it's confirming. Okay. And so once that's done, basically I'll get uh, STE into my account, which is great. Um, all right, so we are going to let the transaction confirm and I'll get back to it to show you what it looks like uh, later. But basically, um, it will look like that. Okay, if I go on Etherscan and look at my account, by the way, this is not my account. This is just a random account I selected on a blockchain, but STETH will be in the token section here in in, uh, in Etherscan, but we'll see. Let's, let's wait. Ah, okay, so the transaction is an explorer. Okay. Anyway, um, so now, um, yeah, so this is my transaction. Now, once the transaction is confirmed, the STs will be in my balance um, and it will start accruing reward. Now, what if I want to unstake my ETH? Uh, so as I said, you can't unstake your ETH from the beacon chain, but what you can do instead is you can swap your ST ETH back for regular ETH, which is basically Effectively, it's like unstaking your ETH, right? So, um, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically what you can do. If you want to go the other way around, once you've got your STETH, well, you can use Paraswap just the other way, except that you will select STETH here and ETH here, right? So you'll just do the reverse transaction and you, you'll move from STETH to ETH. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So I hope that was, um, you learned something today and that was interesting. Uh, now, there, there are more advanced things you can do with STEs, 
like you can provide uh, use your STs to provide liquidity in some DeFi protocols like Curve, for example. Uh, and we might cover this in a different video. But for now, I hope you learned something today. And if you'd like to learn more about Lido and STEs, I strongly recommend checking out Lido's website and our help center. Um, so we have an article in the help center here. You go to our help center, you type Lido, and up oh, there is an article that's about Lido. Um, and of course, if you need any, if you have any questions or you need guidance about STE, Slido, whatever else, don't hesitate to reach out via the help widget on our support page, or you can also uh, reach out to us on Twitter at ledger underscore support. Uh, so we'll be happy to help and we look forward to hearing back from you guys. Um, I hope that was useful. Thanks. Bye.